Hello, and welcome back to The Sim. In this one, we're jumping on the ground here at Buttonville Airport. As you can see, we're by the lovely Millionaire FPO. Too bad it's all closing down soon. But we're here with our Vision Jet, and we're going to get into this, and we're going to start off with how to link Navigraph and Simbrief. So the first thing I want to do when I jump in is come down here to the VAMS, pop it out. That way we've got it in our view and then we can go ahead and start getting things lit up. Now in my case, I already have buttons assigned. So I'm going to just turn on the GPU. And if I was in the statics menu, I would have seen that turn on. And I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the covers and get rid of the chalks. Click on the frame and get rid of it. So there we go, the power is coming up and we're good to go. Now, if we come down to our GTCs, then we would jump into the MFD. And I'm gonna put this one on the left side. I'm gonna put this one on MFD. I'm gonna put this one on Navcom, which means I'm gonna bring that back there. Uh, so as you can see, we are on the left and the right with purple. Uh, so if down here we set purple to that pane, uh, then when we come back up here, you can see that that's the pane that the middle one's going to do. Then over here is the cyan, and down here on the left side, you can see that the cyan is touching it. Now if we jumped into Simbri for it away, it's going to bring us to uh, the page to go ahead and link it. However, if you jump into the utilities under setup, here we find the Navigraph settings. So first up, disable MT tabs. That's a yes. Under Simbrief, do you want to load procedures or load airways? Those are both set to yes. You can actually disable those so it won't, and then you have to do things. Now, one of the things that's really neat for those on Xbox, a uh, PC platform is detected. So moving maps, Navigraph charts, you go ahead and use the standalone Simlink application for that. However, with the vision, if you're on Xbox here, you will have different settings, which will allow you to run Simlink from within the vision. And that will send the data out of the Xbox allowing you on a tablet or a PC running Navigraph charts to get ship information so that you'll see yourself uh, geolocated on those tabs. Very cool. However, we're on PC, so we don't have to worry about that. Next up, you come down and you're going to sign in via your account. Now, just before we do that, I would have already, before launching the sim, we would have gone ahead and installed the Navigraph hub. So if you're a Navigraph subscriber, you already have this installed. It used to be Nav Data Center. It's now called Navigraph hub. So I've got my air rack installed, and now I install the G3000 plugin. The Vision Jet does have it embedded within it. However, by installing the plugin, I'm now getting version 1.2.1 as opposed to what comes with the Vision Jet, which would have been older because this is now a new release. So it's a little bit of a benefit that your community folder loads on top of your official folder. So the official loads, the Vision loads, but Navigraph's release plugin is going to sit as a higher target than what comes with the vision. So no worries, it'll always update. And this is where you would click on sign in. Now the sign in process will bring up the barcode which you can scan, but you can also actually click on this hyperlink. So we're gonna click on that hyperlink, which is gonna launch Navigraph and the identity integration. So this is gonna link it to my account. So of course I've got my stuff saved with my browser. Now, do I want to link this? I do. I want the Flight FX Vision Jet uh, to have access so it'll get access to charts, FMS API data. It's going to keep me logged in, and I'm okay with my name uh, being shared. So now this is completely linked, and when you come back to the screen, 
you're going to see that my alias and my subscription, uh, those two things show up in it. So if we come back to the home tab, you now have the ability to jump into charts or to go into sim brief to load your, your nav data. So first, let's look at charts. So by clicking on charts, and we're gonna pop back out, I'm gonna tilt down, you can see that the chart automatically pops up. And that chart is showing us uh, the departure uh, that we previously had loaded. So if we go ahead and click on chart selection, now it brings us into the charts tab. We can look at departures, arrivals, approaches, uh, noise abatement. Every chart is gonna populate where this GTC is sending to. If we come over here and select charts, and I go to chart selection, maybe here what I want is the departure and I wanna see the Buttonville 3. So as you can see, you could load different charts on multiple panes simultaneously. So that could be very helpful if you needed to look at a taxi chart and a departure chart. The other thing that's nice is you can go to SimBrief and now you can go ahead and load your um, dispatched flights. So here you see we have a CYKZ to CYHM, so Buttonville to Hamilton. And we can go ahead and request it so it'll download and data link it into the plane. And once it's ready for import, we can click on the import tab. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and click on that import and I do get that we need to zoom in. The initial reason for this is I wanted you to see that the entire flight pan, plan uh, loads in. And so it loads everything that it can uh, directly into the sim. And this is where we'll have to make some adjustments uh, to make it work a little bit better for us. Now, if we go to SimBrief and we look at SimBrief for the example, you could see that what we loaded in or attempted to load in had us flying the Buttonville departure, but it didn't load the departure even though we had the information in initially, uh, it took us straight out. So sometimes this information is not necessarily going to be exactly what you want. And when I did the initial planning, I actually used Navigraph charts because that allowed me to see the different arrivals and departures in the same way I would do it with a real world EFB like Flight Plan Go. If we head over to Navgraph charts, what you're going to see is that what I wanted was out of Buttonville, I wanted to use runway 33 with the Buttonville 3 departure, which that departure is a fly runway heading. Uh, and then we were going to be vectored to get us to Ling. From Ling, we wanted to load the runway 30 but the udmic 3 arrival now ideally we're going to go to mugzik but it's still when you load it through here it's still going to start off with yyz uh, as the starting point and so for us really what's going to happen is we load this in and then we're going to make changes to it and similar thing goes here this was the best we could create but what you see is it's got the wrong part of the of the arrival because there's actually multiple destinations on the arrival. Even though it knows that with this arrival, we wanted to try to get to uh, runway 30, but it loaded 06. Even though we said we wanted 30, it loaded 06. And part of that just had to do, I think, with what the weather stated at that time. Uh, so it's not exactly what we wanted, and this is kind of what it created for us, uh, but it still got us most of the way there. This is why generally I prefer to load within SimBrief the en route portion, and I leave the arrivals, any of the procedures, I enter those in the plane. We would have actually gone into our flight plan, we'd have gone to procedures, gone to departure, we would have picked that, which it didn't load anyway, off of runway 33, and we would have loaded that. So there we go. Uh, now when we look up, you can see we have our manual sequence that is going to take place. 
Then from there, we will manually fly to Ling. And then you see that it had inserted Mugzig for us. We're going to go ahead and we're going to remove that waypoint. Uh, because, again, we would have gone on the arrival, which this one is wrong. So we're going to need to go to our arrival. We're going to need to uh, edit the arrival. And the reality is we need to go to runway 30. And so that'll give us the correct one. We load that in. So Ling, YYZ. So here's where we can come in and we can remove this waypoint. And so by removing that waypoint, now we're going to manual direct to Ling. And then from Ling, we'll go to Mugzig because we are not going to come out to Ling and come back to Toronto. And we're going to be at such a low altitude, there's no reason to be up here descending. We're just going to come in and be vectored under the shelf. From there, we're going to load the procedure that we wanted to fly, which is instead of a loc, we actually want the runway 30 from Ot Rocks. Now, when you look at this loaded in, you'll see that Ot Rocks is actually right after Mugzig on the arrival as well. So that arrival is designed, so if you have to be put on the loc, you will fly a longer downwind and then be transitioned to the localizer. With the RNAV approach, they'll be able to give you a direct to uh, Otrox to start the approach while on that arrival. So when you look up here, you can see now all the information is loaded. Everything came in from Simbrief and everything is good. The only other thing to understand about Simbrief is the plane does not load the initialization or the fuel that you had inside of Simbrief. So for the fuel portion, you need to go back to Simbrief into your OFP and look at your load sheet. And here you're going to see all the information that you need based on the flight that you set up. So here we have all the info that we need. And remember, your empty weight includes the pilot weight. And so I built a custom vision jet. I called it the vision executive. And that's because I included the pilot weight of 180 pounds. And I included the executive seat configuration with each seat being 41 pounds. Because the 3550 weight of the vision jet only includes the two front seats. The rear configuration can dynamically change and therefore it's the responsibility to add the extra weight to the stations. I.e. if it is the 41 pounds for the seat, you would have to add that to the person. So if you were putting 170 pounds for the person, you'd actually have to account for 211 pounds because the executive configuration needs 41 for the seat and 170 for the person. In our case, we have no passengers and we put 150 pounds of luggage in the cargo area. So here we can see empty weight is 3812, payload is 150, our uh, estimated zero fuel weight is 3962, so under our max, and our estimated takeoff weight is going to be 4682. Uh, so with that information, then what we do is we have two steps that we have to do back inside of the sim. One of them is you have to use the load manager of the sim. So here, I, like I said, I'm going to be uh, zero for, it's only 180 for the pilot. And then it told us we need a block fuel of 840 pounds. So we're going to go ahead and switch to pounds and we're going to change this down and get to 840. So there we go. We're at 840 pounds. Then we're going to go to our baggage and we're going to put in 150 pounds. So there we got 3550. We got 840. Payload is uh, 330. Uh, and then you're at 4720. So this is the example where you actually still have to come in and you have to put the 41 pounds
for each of the seats. So now we've accounted for the seats, even though they're empty, but we still need to account for them. So that's how you would set the plane up. Now we've got our 4802, and of course we're gonna have some taxi out fuel. So by the time we take off, we'll be around 4682. So there we go, we've got our numbers. Now that we've entered that, then you can come down, go into your utilities, go into the initialization, and you would be able to run Fire. your system tests. Fire. Fire. You could come into Fire. your initial fuel, Fire. and now that we've Fire. loaded the fuel... Stall. 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 Now that we've loaded the fuel, we can hit the FOB sink, we get our 125 gallons, uh, and initial fuel is good. We go into the weight and balance, so crew and stores, so the crew, 180 pounds, right? But our basic empty weight is not 3550. Uh, because we set up the jet the way we did, our empty weight should be 3812 minus the 180. So that's where it gets a little confusing. So really we just need to add 82 pounds. So we're gonna get to 36, uh, 32. So we're gonna go 36, 32, plus 180 gets us to 3812, which is the empty weight as Simbrief sees it. So there you go. Uh, there's our basic operating weight, our payload, no passengers, but like we said, we put 150 in the cargo. So that gets us to our 3962, which is our estimated at zero fuel weight. So that matches Simbrief perfectly. And then in takeoff, uh, it's going to say aircraft weight 4802. Uh, and again, our takeoff weight, we are going to burn some gas. So away we go. So everything's there, 4802. We are good to go. And of course, we already entered our flight plan and we get the checkbox. So we hit accept information. All right, so the initialization is set. This is the perfect time to go ahead and cut this here. As you can see, we're going to get out of here soon. If you like this, hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't. Come along with us on the next one. As always, thanks for watching. Have a great day.